Hello and welcome to another video in the Trinity Business Alumni interview series. This evening we join you after a dinner in camera in the 1592 restaurant here in Trinity College that was focused on the theme of the business value of Irish culture and the TBA were delighted to be joined by the three gentlemen to my left by Stuart McLaughlin, the Chief Executive of Business to Arts by Declan Collier, the Chief Executive of the Dublin Airport Authority and by Eugene Downs, the Chief Executive of Culture Ireland. Gentlemen, it was an absolute pleasure to listen to the three of you uh, this evening uh, and to listen to the debate that followed. Um, what we thought we might ask you is the, the key point that you came here to raise and to share with the audience this evening. Stuart, I'll start with you. Um, from my perspective, really, this was about building that understanding that actually there aren't the differences that maybe people perceive between the business and arts community aren't actually there. You know, that we see each other in different worlds and we think we operate in different ways. But maybe that's not entirely true. And at the moment, if we can bring those worlds together and work out how we can cooperate and how we can collaborate, that there's opportunity within that for us. Very good. I think that the key point I wanted to, to, to bring out that sometimes our definition of what our culture is is a bit too narrow, that we tend to focus more on the high arts, theatre, lighting, the, the uh, art forms itself, but you know, our heritage is, is, is made up of a lot more than that and uh, we need to celebrate the fact that the horse may be part of that heritage, um, music, dance, etc. And if we are going to do that, and we are spending the effort of time to promote our culture abroad, that what we need to do is we need to be hard, pragmatic and practical about how we could commoditize and monetize that and not be, not be sort of too prissy about it. We want, we, what we need to do is we need to use the, the values of our culture that we're using abroad to generate economic well-being for our economy back here. And that becomes circular because the better the economy does here, the more we can support promoting our, our culture abroad. So that was the key point I was trying to get out. Thank you. Food for thought for our viewers, certainly. Eugene. Well, Robert, I mean, I think at the time that we find ourselves in, culture uh, is one of the key channels that we have at our disposal to ask ourselves a much more basic questions. I mean, I think it's a time to go back to basics and actually get a sense of ourselves as a country what do we stand for collectively, you know, as citizens, as a group of people, um, making our way now in, in, you know, against hostile and, and difficult waves? Um, that sense of identity through time, you know, over what, 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 what do the Irish stand for? Um, what are our values? And these are very intangible questions, but they're right at the roots of a sense of confidence, a sense of purpose, a sense of reality so that you move through the difficulties, you recognise what are our qualities as a people, both the downsides and the upsides of those. And that's in broad terms, as Declan was saying, that's a cultural question. But also beyond that, our writers, our artists, our thinkers, our musicians, these are people who not only can tell our story to the world in a very compelling way and have done for centuries and continue to do so, but can also help us to understand ourselves because I think they can dig deeper uh, into those questions of what do we stand for, also to embrace the difficulties, embrace, if you like, the mistakes, the dark side, and then come through that. So they're both guides through, I think, a crisis, and then also people who can present and tell our story to the world in a, in a unique and extraordinary way. A collective foundation for national identity, perhaps, and national confidence. Mm. Your words to the audience this evening uh, raised a, an interesting discussion and debate which followed. If I were to put you on the spot and ask you to, to pick out a comment that you found particularly provoking uh, or something that, that really challenged you, what might that be? I'll leave it open to whoever wants to answer. Well, I think from my perspective, the one that stayed with me and the one that I go away and think about more was um, during my talk I referenced uh, the Dublin Airport Authority ad and this kind of concept that one of the reasons that we do so well in the world is when we go to places people already know who we are and know mm -hmm. a bit about us and, and I think in terms of inward investment that stood us in great stead but there was a great question there about how do we convert that in terms of export and how do we convert that in terms of accessing international markets and I think you know, we're probably a bit hard on ourselves in terms of relating to our scale, that we do that very, very well, but there's probably more that we can do and the way that we manage to leverage that ability to form strong relationships quickly and to differentiate ourselves internationally um, has paid off on the inward side and how do we, how do we actually apply that you know, with a more external face. I think for me, uh, Robert, what, what sort of got me thinking was almost a cautionary tale, although it was a question, and, and it related to our use of culture and our Irish culture 
and the promise that makes to people who come here to Ireland. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, we, we talk about how good we are with storytelling, about our writers, about our love and passion for the arts and music and dance. And when people come here to Ireland, they have to see that. Yes. They have to see that. It has to be delivered. Because if we promise people something, they come here and we fail to deliver on that, it won't give us a second chance. I thought that was a really, really positive question because it was, uh, it was looking at perhaps some of the, our frailties. And, and I thought I really enjoyed that question. It was a good one. The necessity to, to live the foundation of the, the culture you refer to, did you? Well, actually, I mean, as Declan was saying, in terms of frailties, um, one of the really interesting questions to come from the floor was about the position of the Irish language. Uh, again, in a time of crisis, but also going back to much deeper questions about identity. Because I, mean, I think, you know, everyone feels, uh, on the one hand, what an extraordinary mismatch between inputs and outputs mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the Irish education system and what learning the Irish language has been able to deliver since independence. And a lot of interesting discussion around now when so many sacred cows are being slaughtered. You know, the political system started to turn its attention and it's time for a national conversation about the role of the Irish language and just taking some really clear decisions. You know, if people really value it, and interestingly, there's actually a strong sense in the room, but also perhaps, again, that the national debate beyond that, that there really is something extraordinary and unique there, and that the more we learn about the past of the Irish language, and a 5,000 year history, perhaps not just a kind of 2,500 year history, the more we feel we have something we need to nurture that non-Irish people put a really high value on. And as we found in the States, again, one of the, the, the um, uh, contributors to the floor said, in the US, nearly 100 universities, third level institutions, um, with a small investment from, from the Irish side, are actually offering degree courses in the Irish language. And why can they do that? Because there's a huge demand stateside for, for degree courses in Irish. So that's really throwing down a gauntlet to us at home yes. to just grasp, again, one another of these sacred cows and well, that's a mixed metaphor, and make some uh, really uh, important and necessary difficult decisions about how we embrace that part of our culture. And we have love for Shim Kurvi, Kriya Kleshanadu. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us at the Trinity Business of Light Sea. Good morning.